now now guys you know remember in the previous class we talked about the lean canva and how you can use uh, the lean canva to build a business model and today i'm helping you unpack so these are two it's still the same same class but it's a tool on how you can picture the business model until it comes together and by the time you're done with this you can have a simple document to explain your business model usually you need to have you see like this paper here so okay it's already pre-written so I, I did have to because the because it's all kununua nini kununua manila paper but if possible everything can have its own manila paper ndo kuna zistichingi tu shini 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 because remember what, what we said in our previous class uh, good habits of customer segments because remember you wanna always be starting with what? customer segment so a uh, customer segment you, you already defined it and all that so let's just get started with customer segment and as usual we're gonna be using what? Vakenya as our mini of as our dummy brand. <clears throat> so, customer segment. Vakenya, how did we settle on manufacturing footwear? How? Why? Why footwear? That did not just come from nowhere. It took months and months and months of what? Of research, months and months of thinking about it, and months and months of working on it. Okay, so. This is your research stage, and this you have. And if you already started your own business, you need to start thinking about your business deeper. Whatever stage you are in business, whether you're early stage, you're already running, and you think you need to improve it to beef it up, or you're starting out. A business model is gonna be the easiest thing to help you think through. And if you organize it like this, it's gonna always be hitting on your brain. If I can't pick a space, in that from a segment, in your co-op, you can take care of it. But I don't have space, so But remember, you can put it because so it means to be here. Here, it waits on. Line, but it's not because I don't have a bigger space. My little opportunity. So remember, you can put, you can add. So in your office or in your bedroom, have a bigger space for it. So our sticky note number one. So we, you can start simply by writing one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three to help you think. Uh, you can add four, five, six. Remember, when you start doing research, you're gonna find so many segments. So our first segment. Uh, let's say we, we, were, we were thinking about school. Okay, I have worked with Daisy, so let's double Daisy this time around. Let's, this time around, let's stop with what? With school, sh with, with school shoes. Okay, so when you start saying you want to make school shoes, where did this idea come from? For us in Kenya, it came from, pa from parents insisting we get what? We get them school shoes. For their children, they say, you make shoes, ask, why don't you make them for my son number 45? Why don't you make for my daughter number 3? Why don't you design for me these school shoes? So that came pursuing, pursuing us. It was not even our model in the beginning. Did you decide to do what? Now let's work on this school shoes thingy. After six months in business, that's when we started serving what? The school shoes. So in that December when we launched school shoes, it was because of pressure from parents. So number one, you come here and say, oh, so what's our customer segment here? School going children. That's our segment one. What's other segment? Uh, let's say another segment about the same same the same same product is um, uh, sponsors. Sponsors who are sponsoring what? And the people children. Sponsors. Like let's say NGOs and uh, corporates who are sponsoring what? School going children. Another, another, push another segment. Let's do those are our two segments. And uh, what else could be done with our customers? Let's say we just work with those two, those two people. Ah, uh, now, now, if uh, if these are our first two segments, we need now to know whether to hire both school going children and sponsors, or to fire sponsors, or to hire wherever stage you are at. You will not just say your idea. This is this gonna be what your testing idea. So you gotta test both school going children and sponsors. You and you need to have a lot of segments. Another segment could be let's say corporate women or whatever whatever people you decide. But I'm gonna show you how to work with one to the end. Hardy will live way. So that's how you saw you're not imagining how will this pipeline look like. This is us building your what? Your business model. So after we have figured out so uh, in Kenya, you come now. Say so which market are you serving? Okay, you need to write Kenya in Kenya. Okay, you have to be very, very specific. Uh, in Kenya, if you want rural areas, you can even go as far as even say in Kenya, living in Nairobi. You can go that specific. Okay, it doesn't have to be vague. 
You can go so specific about these children and you need to have your numbers right, you need to have everything right. And then, usually when you walk around, you have your sticky note as you have discussed why you should be walking around the sticky note. You've written some small, small notes about what? These school going children in Kenya. You'll find your semi rural children, primary children. You wrote it prior. You come and put it where? Next to it. You can put as many sticky notes to me here. You can come and get up in Kitabu for reference sake. Any information you find out about school going children, write it down. Any information you find out about them so that you, by the time you finish this, you exactly know who you're targeting. So uh, in the previous class, we talked about how to, to get into the, until knowing it's Daisy, you're targeting. So in this class, I'm showing you how you can bring all the information you have learned about the business model here. Now, we have finished with the school. Now, what's our problem? Is that for Kenya, we are told to customize school shoes for the children. Parents keep saying it's too heavy, we need later school shoes. Parents keep saying that not last long, we need durable school shoes. Parents gave us a lot of problems about their school going children. Even though, and Kenya insists that ch children should wear what? Black school shoes every day. So, let's tackle a single problem. Let's work with what? Uh, light school shoes. Okay. School shoes. For pupils, so these are people in primary schools, and make it what durable. Uh, so the problem is uh, design light school shoes that is uh, light school shoes and durable for school going children. That's our problem. That's the problem parents have been complaining about for a while. That's our problem. Now after we figure out our problem, now we start ask ourselves. Now if this is our problem, how can we before we make the school shoes? How can we make money from it? Okay, who's gonna pay us when we bring all this noble work of designing school shoes? And we figured, how about we make money from customizing school shoes for schools? Customizing school shoes. So that's our first revenue stream. Our other revenue stream in school shoes is selling school shoes. Selling. Uh, our other revenue in the same could be delivery school shoes. We imagine maybe you can decide to deliver what? School shoes. Delivery school shoes. Another thing is offering what? Uh, another revenue stream is getting grants to give school shoes to what? Free school shoes to what? To our to the uh, underprivileged children. We can say to be doing that, right? So another one is uh, get grants, get sponsors to sponsor what underprivileged children in schools. That's your third what your third revenue. So, uh, all this uh, get sponsors to sponsor what these children. Remember, here the customer segments are this. So, revenue stream to get sponsors is through what you, you have to state your exact revenue stream. It's gonna be what grants and donations or donations. Okay. So we have four potential revenue streams for school going children uh, oh, idea. Now, 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 after these students have gone to school, after, after they have paid us, now what is our solution? Solution is more like what are we offering? Now we have suddenly decided, ah, I think with this kind of thing, the number of students are these uh, in Kenya, this is their problem, this is problem parents are complaining about it. And now we've decided that people are going to be paying us, we're going to get money from selling school shoes, customizing school shoes, getting sponsors or grants, another one is getting what? And delivering the school shoes to wherever people are, right? So what's going to be your solution here? Our solution here is first of all, uh, design and manufacture. That's our solution. Our solution one for school going children. Okay. Our next solution about school shoes would be customization. Okay, we are offering what? A customizing service. Customization of school shoes. So we charge a fee for that. Another thing, another solution is uh, we need to build what? a delivery system, right? Offer delivery. So that parents don't suffer during back to school. And you can have a lot of options. So when you are thinking about offering delivery, do you want to build a logistics business or do you want to use that party? Those 
Like we should grab it. As you said, those grab it writing what in small small notes when thinking about it. So example, if you say over delivery and your first solution is over delivery is third party, come right here third party and discuss more about it. And then you take another thing and write number two is what? Build it yourself. These things, whatever how this is gonna look, it's gonna affect your what? Your cost structure eventually. Now the next thing, what is your unique value proposition of, of, of all these things, right? Your unique value proposition in this place, for back then we keep saying our oh, simple link, you find African fit, but that covers what? Our entire model. But right now, let's say you want to have a very, very unique value proposition because I'm pretty, uh, you're, you're trying to present this school manufacturing as a mini product with its own investors, its own financial services, its, its own entire thing, right? So you cannot say the entire African features you want as a value proposition. That's the value proposition for your entire business. But the same round of very specific for this customer segment. What is the propos proposition? What's the proposition is going to be here. Send your uh, proposition is designing light, durable school shoes using leather and rubber. And now, rubber is very, very heavy, so you can't use rubber in this shade. So, what can you realize? If you start making school shoes using rubber, it's gonna make the shoes very, 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 very heavy. How can we make it light? We discovered if you use TPI, it's some classic rubber, so it's lighter and stuff, right? So, when you're thinking about that, so that is part of the solution, right? Half a solution is the nini, use TPI sole. A good leather. You can mix it up in this comfortable solution. So that for the question of one nini, uh, nini, our one is gonna be this to the to the students. So we offer light, fully customizable, and existing design, long-lasting school shoes. That is a mouthful. No one's gonna remember that. Okay. So how do we bring it into three words? Simple, durable, light school shoes. Durable, light. Shoes deliver at your door. I have said everything we started it in this. You know what? Right school shoes deliver at your door. At your door, simple. And then that is for less the regular schools. For the that is one of the ways of offering that unique body position. And you can have more than one body position for endurance sponsors. And we can say. For every school shoes they buy, uh, for every grant we receive, we donate school shoes to less privileged. So we say what? Delivering high quality school shoes to underprivileged children through what? People of bananas. There are so many ways you can put it, but let's not forget that one. That is a unique value position. Why should stay? And then another thing we hear is about children. Children like do not like less ups in your uh, delivered at your door with, uh, with the design of your choice. So we have more than one design in your school shoes thingy. After you're finished with number four. So, we have talked all these things. How are our tunnels looking like? After you've talked about all these things, how are tunnels looking like? Tunnels is like a supply chain. How, do, how does this school shoes thingy supply chain look like? So, our first channel would be, uh, let's say, we can talk about the, the back end. The first tunnel is sourcing for materials, designing it, sourcing. For high quality material, that's the back end supply chain. The front end supply chain in school shoes will be what? Offer delivery. Offer door to door delivery. Offer door to door delivery. And pay on delivery. Delivery option. Pay on delivery option. This is one of our few channels. That's making it very, very simple for you guys. So that it's very, very confusing when you're dealing with this, right? So, if these are our first channels, what should you think about next? Guys, ladies, 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 and gentlemen. The, our next channel is going to be thinking about what? We have thought about our solution, our channels. Now, the next thing we need to deal about is what? Our metrics. What are you going to be measuring here? What are the measures you're going to be doing at this point? So it could be number of sales. Number of sales is one thing you're tracking. Uh, number of happy clients. Happy clients. How many people love our products? The ability of our products. Which of our school shoes. Uh, but can you be promising your school shoes is going to last your child until you actually put it And if, in case, if, in, if your child is in a day school, we guarantee that your school shoes are going to take them at least 12 months. 
the whole school year just to buy another shoes and sometimes i've even come to add now right now this is a funny story after four years in when i complained that because it was yishi i just said this is a complete this is a competition i can't make up a anna so i'm never more selling us it's not my fault when i was in her way i did not come back did you not make a product she said actually i am buying a certificate from four my dress is running from three now because i'm too shy and they're still durable so that is one of the feedbacks we came to realize apparently we're making school shoes that are amazing but so that's one of the things we've been tracking over the years why do we have a slow as parents don't come back fast we realize that as issue that's a good thing uh or a bad thing depends who you are so no no that's one of our key metrics another key metric you're gonna do is let's say we track track delivery by delivery i mean if you're having that party so one track that party and that and two track in-house if you're still figuring out how to do your deliveries okay it's in the channel so it has to be the matrix and then another thing you can be tracking is what quality of materials locally there's so many things you can be tracking in your key metrics but you need to be tracking the ones that actually matter to your client what actually matters to them after we have finished with that with our, with our metrics now 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 here is the best part for us to fully serve let's say roy i'm gonna write here roy who is a still going student in a from primary that has living with her, his parents in Nairobi and is let's say 13. for us to fully serve roy who is a student in the city what do we need to make sure we deliver to them Bila pressure we come here in a cost structure so in a cost structure this was that thinking so, you know, uh, how does our back end supply chain look like how does our delivery service look like how does our production service look like how manufacturing work look like that's our solution how does our customer acquisition look like because they really segments how do you market to them how do we reach them how does all this entire thing look like that is your cost structure for this business to be up and running how does it look like so what are you gonna be paying for so for what we are paying for manufacturing we are paying for uh sourcing some sourcing more materials we are paying for the premises where the production is happening from we are paying for delivery all these things you put here why is cost structure important when you're working with all of this? Remember, when you're working with that party, you need to do the entire model using that party. And when you're working with the building, uh, or you're building your own supply chain, you, so you see here, cost structure determines, for example, let's look at such a thing here. That's what I'm telling you when you're doing this thing, you need to be very, very careful. Make as many things as possible. No, if you have a cost structure, you know what to knock out, what to outsource, what. So here, the structure of looks like here. How do, what do we end up outsourcing? So when, back in, when I was doing the backing of this model, this is what I discovered. I don't have to manufacture in a huge space ourselves and do all the, that work. We discovered, how about we start having a lot of micro micro businesses doing the manufacturing for us. So the only thing we do is quality control and design work. That way, we are empowering the bigger community and offering training. We are empowering a bigger community. We have cut our cost of manufacturing. So you are only purchasing directly from the people we are empowering from. We are providing high quality materials to them. So it, we end up having a very, very complex business model. If I cannot tell you how many things you are always feeling in a day. There is someone in the combat sourcing for materials. Someone in the tunnel is looking for leather. Someone offering clothes somewhere. I think after we looked at it like this in this entirety, we realized how can we leverage that party or should we build our own? We've asked ourselves so many questions determining how our course is going to look like because for us, okay, you're looking to have the cheapest, most scalable, and amazing business model that actually offers what? Dignity to what? To Africans. And we want to have us to build a system whereby everyone, whether you are a, you are a manufacturing partner, whether you are a sourcing partner, whether you are a, what do you call it, supply, supply of raw materials partner, Everyone is making money while we offer the best service to our clients and even if you are students. So this one is going to help you figure out what model, what are the things that you thought you needed to do that you do not have to do. So, and that, that, that's what I've just said directly goes to what? Our favorite part, our competitive advantage. Our competitive advantage. For Bakenya, uh, that's, that's how we ended up with our world of competitive advantage, right? So what, what does Bakenya look like? Offer a brand, we are, it is an online marketplace. Marketplace. 
and we have a what? That is A. And number two, we need a building of system that's called what? A uh, cellar center. Cellar center. So cellar, our cellar center is slightly different from other people's cellar center because in our cellar center, this is where all our back end converge. People, artisans meet here, people, suppliers of materials meet here, people who are looking to get school rich meet here. So here, this is the back end. And then you as a client, this is a front end of already made shoes that Vakenia has curated, fully bounded with Vakenia. And it's always, if not Vakenia has made it, you can just put it what? Uh, packed by Vakenia. So our model is to offer people what? A lot of choices at the end of the day. And believe me, Kitama before I did this model, we actually thought Vakenia has to do all the manufacturing, all the sourcing, all these things. But the cost was insane. This is for a shopper. We don't even buy manufacturing shoes. This is how you go to our what? As a shocker. So when you do this model, it's gonna allow you. Where are the shocks? What what can you can, what? so this Nini? Me personally wanted to have a kind of business model that's actually truly African. A lot of small businesses working to serve the client. And I hope I deliver that. Because we have done the school shoes one, right? Now, what's our next segment? Let's say you come and say you want to serve a uh, Daisy the Big Food Women. You come and put here. The Bigfoot women in Kenya. Bigfoot corporate women in Nairobi. In Nairobi. That's how you do a good what? Segment. Doesn't matter who's ready, but we say someone who is 26 years old. So that is going to determine the entire model again. So you can have as many segments here, but they tell you, you come to the cost structure. You start firing people. That is the importance of this. But every so you do this for every segment. Well, I'm telling you, this work you cannot do it in a day or two days. It has to be work you do it over a long period of time. For a Kenya model, we did it with around five months. And we're still tweaking it every day. I can't show you the entire model because I'm not allowed to do that. But you start seeing our implementation as time goes by. It's obviously in my, in my office. But I cannot show you the entire model because it was months of work. But this, this is the simplest way. So I'm telling you to have this in your room, so I put it into one, you put it into a document, you start the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, until you feel, you feel you've exhausted all possible. Remember for customer service, it's customer segment. It's possible, serviceable market. Who can you serve with your business idea? Okay, and then start testing it out. By the time you get my hand, you start firing people. Like, Vakenya has fired. Uh, in part of our model, we had, what do you call it? In our terminals, we had manufacturing. We fired our manufacturing team and hired what? Our manufacturing partners. So we empowered our manufacturing team to become our manufacturing partners. And if you want to start manufacturing, like currently, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, we're working with people called partner. So every time you think about a business model, it helps you look at the cost deeper and deeper and deeper okay this is like a road map please i cannot insist how important you have your business model is our business plan and this you know this is the best thing about a business model when you're firing someone or don't know more here or sema we don't need school children to do this you check them and say these ones are fired they're not gonna be disturbing us anymore to the trash can See? <laughs> it's very simple and good. So you got this really. You wanna sponsor this channel, these lectures kindly do. Uh, you can send them message my number, I'm gonna leave it here. If you want to send encouraging words, my email is gonna be here. Or if you have questions and if I've seen something that's not very clear, you can come and you can debug. And I'm also be offering what? I'm gonna be offering consultancy as the weeks go by. And enjoy your day. Bye. Is it really here? Cut.